Hi, this is Laura. And I'm going to present a joint work with Alessandro Fantechi, Stefania Agnese and Samuele Lini on a tool based on space to extract variability information from natural language requirements. Uh, this is indeed our long-term goal and uh, to capture variability from requirements of uh, uh, a software product and to see if there's some variability information uh, to uh, develop a system as a software product line. Uh, there are some related work in this area, namely to analyze natural language requirements, but with different approaches. On the one side, uh, uh, the analysis of uh, software requirements uh, already thought for a family of products, for instance, where each requirement comes equipped with the listing of the variants in which it has to be uh, mandatory. On the, on the other side, there's the um, work uh, uh, on the identification of commonalities and variabilities from requirement documents, analyzing requirement documents of different products uh, from different vendors I mean, with this, in the same uh, family of products. Uh, on the other uh, side, there's uh, okay, our approach, we consider only one requirement uh, document of a single product, and uh, we look for ambiguity defect and see uh, with from this ambiguity defect we can uh, uh, identify sources of variability. Why ambiguity? Okay, in, often ambiguity in a requirement is due to the need to postpone choices for uh, later decisions. For instance, in my own town, uh, in the 60s, uh, there was a small factory uh, where they wanted to produce trendy color sweaters and they decided to produce in white and then to color only when trendy was meaningful, right? Because uh, you don't know what trendy is uh, at the beginning of the production. And actually, the idea was uh, pretty successful. They grow a little bit. And ambiguity can be used, uh, in, so in fact, as a so, way to capture uh, the variability aspects that has to be solved later in software development. Uh, let me explain the idea of a toy example of a coffee vending machine. We consider four requirements, and uh, we run uh, these requirements in a natural language processing tool for ambiguity detection, which uh, has highlighted the uh, terms which are in blue. Uh, after that, uh, uh, manual analysis is needed to see if these defects found by the tool are actual ambiguities, they are variabilities or uh, false positives. So to consider requirement number one, after inserting a suitable coin, the user should use a beverage and select the amount of sugar. A suitable uh, might be thought like uh, 20, 50 cents or one euro, or uh, producer can say, okay, why don't you produce machines for different markets, like for instance, uh, euros, dollars and pounds. And so there's a, uh, a fragment of uh, um, a feature diagram here uh, that uh, tells that. Then we consider second and third requirement together. Uh, the third one says that the coffee is a mandatory feature, while there's a disjunction between cappuccino and tea, which is modeled in the feature diagram as, a, as an OR. There's a disjunction uh, between cappuccino and tea, meaning that there must be an extra beverage. And um, each machine either offers both of them, or but at least, okay, or one of them, but at least one is needed. And uh, finally, the fourth requirement as to uh, ambiguities, uh, possibly, and after. After is an actual ambiguity, uh, because uh, we have to specify how much uh, after uh, beverage delivery the ringtone has to be played. 
and we do not want to produce different machine with uh, different time uh, intervals while uh, we want to produce machine with and without the ringtone and uh, the ringtone is an optional feature. So, uh, which are the ambiguity defects that are most relevant for variability? We have analyzed a number of real requirement documents in a previous work and uh, uh, concluded that uh, only some of them are interesting, namely vagueness, disjunction, escape clauses, weakness, quantifiers, and partially passive voice. Uh, moreover, we have seen that there are other indicators uh, besides ambiguity that can be interesting. There are a few of them, uh, words like select, choose, or sentences, uh, a kind of escape clause uh, sentences, like in the one in the example. Uh, if runtime diagnostics are implemented, all failures should be available to be recorded. Then the first part of the subordinate clause contains if, contains implemented, and uh, so this subordinate clause is an escape, and it can be found with, okay, the, finding the, the two words together in a, in a subordinate. And uh, moreover, a conjunction and words like exclude requires, implies, can be used in the construction of a feature diagram, respectively, to find conjunctions and uh, constraints. So now the question is uh, which natural language processing tool for ambiguity detection we can use? And uh, uh, okay, the requirements are a free license to detect all of the ambiguity defects that are in interest of ambiguity and to prove precision it has to offer the ability to select only the, the ambiguity indicators that are of interest. May possibly to refine the dictionaries, to, so to edit the dictionaries, to add and remove words, to add the new syntactic rules, again to improve precision, and so to reduce the amount of manual work which is needed uh, for the analysis of the output of the tool, and uh, uh, to improve recall, to add the new uh, indicators of variabilities, which are not indicators of ambiguities that we have seen in uh, this previous slide. So we have considered a number of natural language processing tools and uh, compared them. Uh, Quars developed by ISTI CNR in Pisa, Tiger Pro by Joseph Kasser, Kuvuscribe developed by Quora, and uh, Requirement Scout developed by Qualison, Rust from Reuse, and Arcway uh, of IBM. Uh, only the first two are uh, have a free license, uh, only Quartz and RAT offer full uh, capability of selecting, adding, and editing dictionaries. Uh, all, most, none of them offer the possibility to add new syntactic rules. And then in the yellow table, we see which diction built-in dictionaries of the tools cover the ambiguity classes that are uh, interesting for uh, variability. And for instance, Quartz cannot find the passive voice as well as Tiger, and uh, Kubuscribe uh, cannot find the junction and so on. Okay, but uh, in general we have seen that uh, none of them fully satisfy uh, our requirements and we decided to build a new tool uh, with uh, uh, a lexical, uh, in the lexical analysis, uh, we can reuse the Quast dictionaries, so which are uh, pretty complete and interest, okay, the ones that are interesting for variability. And we want to add the free syntactic rules uh, to improve uh, precision. Uh, first one is to consider the disjunction only between nouns uh, instead of the junction to core, to cut off. Uh, disjunction among long sentences and disjunction among adjectives that we have seen not to be so interesting for variability. Uh, to look for the passive voice, but uh, only in the case in which no agent is uh, specified, because if the agent is specified, uh, the agent is the subject of the action. 
then it is not even an ambiguity. And then to look for sentences, uh, subordinate clauses containing the pairs of indicators like if, when, where, and the words like implemented, available, offered uh, to, uh, to look for um, variability. Okay, to, the, uh, to uh, develop the tool, we have used an open source library, which is called Spacey, which is written in Python and Cyton, and it's uh, okay, it's uh, licensed by MIT. And uh, it uh, implements uh, a statistical neural network models in a large number of natural languages. We have considered the English, but we can apply to German, Italian, French, and well, uh, many others. Uh, the pipeline takes uh, requiring documents in, in a, well, it's a text document uh, and produced an annotated document after tokenization, tagging, part of word uh, speech uh, parsing, part, okay, part of tagging, a uh, parser, sorry, and uh, a lemmatizer. And uh, uh, okay, this on the left hand side lower it's the uh, sky pipeline and then we take a, a dictionary we create a pattern and we add this pattern to the phrase matcher offered by a spicy spacey and then we apply this phrase matcher uh, to the document produced by the spacey pipeline and we obtain uh, annotated uh, requirements where the uh, ambiguity defects are uh, annotated. And then uh, we uh, write a syntactic rule in, uh, in Python and we apply the rule to the doc uh, written by the Spacey pipeline and we obtain annotated requirements. So as an example, we have uh, nine uh, requirements and uh, we consider the weakness dictionary, including in this example only the verbs may, should and could. And uh, so we produce uh, the final pattern from the dictionary. We apply it to the phrase matcher and uh, we run uh, okay, the, uh, this phrase matcher on the annotated uh, document. And uh, uh, the tool returns uh, uh, this output in the lower part of, of the slide that four matches are found and for each match tells you which is the weak verb then the number of the requirement and the requirement itself the, uh, as an example of uh, application of this syntactic analyzer we consider the passive form of no agent and uh, uh, we consider four requirements the first and the third have to be detected and indeed they detect it because they have a passive voice and they do not have a, the agent. The order should be shipped to the client address. The payment system should be displayed, but we don't know what to do that. While the second one uh, has a passive voice, but it also has uh, the specific, includes the specification of the agent and it is not uh, detected. And the fourth one, just to check, is a uh, verb in active form. Okay, finally, we have assessed the tool by considering precision and recall, and uh, on uh, running uh, the, the new tool, uh, the spacey based tool, on uh, two uh, medium large requirement documents, uh, respectively of 256 and uh, 65 requirements. And uh, we also run uh, the same, uh, okay, we run quars uh, on the same uh, documents. And uh, we are happy with the results that we obtained because uh, precision is enormously improved. And uh, we uh, lose a little bit in recalling one example in particular because of the, uh, okay, for considering the junction only between nouns, so we lose something. Uh, but uh, since it's not so important to really find all the possible variabilities, much more important to have a first uh, 
uh, to have precision and to reduce the, the, the manual work to, uh, for this analysis. Right? And, uh, and this is what you obtained. Okay, now thank you, and I uh, leave the word to Samuele with some more details on the tool. First, Spacey is imported, and from Spacey we import some simple that uh, will be useful in this part of code like verb, agent, and aux plus. After that, the language model is important and associated to the NLP object. At this point, the requirement document in the case a shop point txt is loaded. And here, the language model is applied to the text. This will produce, as a result, an object where the text has been tokenized and each token is associated with tags, such as the NC tag. At this point, the tokenized and tagged text passes inside this loop, and as a result, we will have all the requirements that respect the rule inside this loop. In fact, the result is true requirement that are in uh, passive form and inside there is not uh, the word buying. 